In tonal music, we name intervals with reference to scale steps. A fifth is the distance between the first and fifth steps of the scale, and so on. This system works well when using letter names to refer to pitches. For example, D to C is a minor seventh because you count seven steps in a scale from D up to C. D to B sharp, on the other hand, is an augmented sixth because you count six steps in a scale from D to B. In post-tonal music, we may not be referring to diatonic scales. The traditional interval names can be misleading. Recall that we use integers to refer to pitch classes in post-tonal music because composers are more liberal with notation when tonality isn't at play. C and B sharp are part of the same pitch class. So how do we deal with intervals in non-tonal music? We count semitones. Remember that minor seventh between D and C? Remember that augmented sixth between D and B sharp? In a non-tonal context, we're going to treat these as the same interval because they both contain 10 semitones. In post-tonal analysis, we have four ways to talk about intervals. A pitch interval can be any number of semitones, in an equal temperate system anyway. What about non-equal temperate systems? Ask Harry Parch. Sometimes, when you're analyzing music, you might be interested in the direction of an interval. To indicate the direction, we'll use plus and minus signs. For example, if we wanted to refer to the interval between D way down here and this C way up here, we'd say plus 22 because it's 22 semitones in the upward direction. If we're starting on this D up here and we descend to this C down here, we'd say minus 2 because it's 2 semitones in the downward direction. These are more specifically called ordered pitch intervals. They're the most specific of the four ways of looking at intervals that we're discussing in this video. Other times, we might only be concerned with the space between the pitches and not the direction of the interval, or we could simply be talking about a harmonic interval that doesn't have direction. These are called unordered pitch intervals, and we simply refer to them by the number of semitones between them without a plus or minus sign. In this case, whether we start on our low D and ascend to the high C, or if we start on the high C and descend to the low D, as unordered pitch intervals, they're both simply 22 semitones. Like in tonal music, sometimes we care about the register of the pitches we're analyzing and sometimes we don't. We can say, for example, that a C major triad contains a major third and a perfect fifth when we rearrange a chord we've seen voiced in a particular way. When we talk about intervals in this way, we're talking about pitch class intervals. The interval between two pitch classes can never be more than 11 semitones because no two pitch classes can be more than 11 semitones apart. Remember those clock face diagrams we used to illustrate pitch class integers? If you don't remember them, you can find a link to the last video below. Since every pitch belongs to one of the 12 pitch classes, going up or down an octave, adding or subtracting 12 semitones, will bring you back to a member of the same pitch class. When you think about this, it makes perfect sense, but when you think about the integers, it can be a bit confusing. For example, if you start on D, pitch class 2, and go up 12 semitones, we get back to D, obviously. If you think about the math, we just said that 2 plus 12 equals 2. If we start on D, pitch class 2, and go up 16 semitones, we get to F sharp, or pitch class 6. If that sounds crazy, it's much easier to understand by thinking of the clock face. If it's 2 o'clock, 16 hours later it would be 6 o'clock. I'll leave it to you to decide whether it's 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Because we're in pitch class space, because we're dealing with pitch class intervals, we would say that the D to F sharp interval is simply four semitones. Using our old augmented sixth friend, D to B sharp, we can say that if it's 2 p.m. now, in 10 hours, or 10 semitones, it'd be midnight. If we take order into consideration, the distance between, say, F and D is nine semitones in pitch class space. If we don't indicate a direction, it's because there isn't really a direction in pitch class space. An ordered pitch class interval of nine semitones could be represented like this with the F below the D, or like this with the F above the D. The only important thing is that the F comes before the D. By using the clock face, this becomes very clear. Well, what about D to F, you ask? Well, the ordered pitch class interval between D and F is three semitones because the D comes before the F. You might have guessed that we have one more perspective on intervals. What if we don't care about the order in which two pitch classes occurred? What if we only care about the space between them? 
Well, then we'll simply look at the distance between them on the clock face. Order doesn't matter. We could call these unordered pitch class intervals, but that's a mouthful. So we'll simply call them interval classes instead. If we go back to the previous example, this F to D, this F to D, and this D to F are all interval class three because the shortest distance between them on the clock face is three semitones. We are ignoring the order of the pitches. How many interval classes are there? I'll give you a hint. Think about how far apart any two integers can be on the clock face. If you guess six, you're right, because interval class is only concerned with the distance between two pitch classes on the clock face and not their order, then two integers can really only ever be up to six semitones apart. That means, for example, that this E to G sharp, this C to E, this D to B flat, and this D sharp to F double sharp all represent the same interval class, in this case, interval class four. Here's a realization that I made of a 12-tone row written by Anton Webern that will demonstrate the four different approaches to intervals that we might use when analyzing non-tonal music. The order pitch intervals show quite a disparity. The melody is disjunct and presents quite a variety of intervals. When we strip away the direction, we start to see some similarity across the melody. Things get really interesting when we look at it from the perspective of pitch class intervals. When we look at the interval classes between each pitch, we can see a pattern. Each group of three notes includes the interval classes four and one in some order. By looking at interval classes, we can see that this melody is motivically concentrated in these intervals, but the pitch realization of the melody still affords quite a bit of variability. These four perspectives each offer something useful for music analysis. The first two, the pitch intervals, are more tangible and more specific. The last two, the pitch class intervals, are more abstract and more general. None of these perspectives is better than another. Each has a purpose, and which one is best to use depends on which musical device you're trying to explain.